I believe that one day if the mothers who did get the abortions do get saved and everything, when they get to heaven, they will be confronted by their kids they had aborted, and by then, they'll be grown up, and because, you know, the Bible says in Philippians that the good Lord, he'll finish the good work that he started in us, and I believe there will be conversations like, why? Why do you have me aboard? God wanted me to do great things down on earth. He wanted me to be the next Billy Graham, be the next George Washington, the next Albert Einstein. So, I mean, murder, you know, abortion has really cost America dearly, and God will not let that go unpunished. All these people who are allowing it, God's going to get them. Planned Parenthood, butchering up these babies and selling them and everything, their parts of their bodies and everything. God, he's going to take care of them people. He's going to get them. And there's a payday someday. And with murder, murder goes as deep as even gossiping and slandering you know, all that kind of stuff. You can kill someone just with your tongue, just as much as you can kill someone with a gun or a knife. And sadly, gossip has destroyed a lot of churches, a lot of families. It has really hurt so many people. And like the Bible is so true, whenever Solomon wrote in Proverbs 18 that the power of life and death are in the tongue. The seventh commandment, uh, thou shalt not commit adultery. Now this one here, honestly, all the Ten Commandments, for every single commandment, you need a whole sermon for it. <laughs> John Hagee, a few years ago, actually did preach a whole sermon series on the Ten Commandments. A sermon for each of the commandments, and it was a very fine sermon series. But on this commandment, God's telling us to stay pure. He's wanting us to... The only sexual activity that God truly approves of is, be is between a married man and woman. Amen. Everything from Amen. fornication Amen. to people messing around with people that are married, the homosexuals out here, all that stuff God does not agree with, and he will punish those people. The mm -hmm. uh, Bible says in Hebrews 13 that marriage is honorable and the bed undefiled, and whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. The Lord will really punish people who get involved in that sort of lifestyle. And the Bible says in Revelation 21a about how the whoremongers will have their part in the lake of fire. Same with liars and murderers. We'll get to line here in just a moment after we go through the Eighth Commandment, which is do not steal. Do not steal. You know, stealing, it's another one, sort of like the other commandments. You know, it just goes deeper than what you think. It's not just, you know, not going out here and stealing money or something that doesn't belong to you, but it's even like talking about, you know, when people rob God, whenever they will not pay their tithes and offerings like they should, you know, we're supposed to give 10%, you know, or whatever we can give to the Lord. The Bible says 10%, and if we don't give, you know, to the Lord like we should, the Lord will put a curse on us for that, and that is stealing, just like if you were to go out here and rob a bank or something like that. You know, going back to adultery, I mean, you know, a lot of these things, you know, whenever Jesus came around, you know, back when in Moses' time, the people just saw, you know, it's just doing the acts physically that get you in trouble. But Jesus takes it a step further, you know, like with Matthew 5, 28, when he says that whenever you look at a woman to lust after her, you've already committed adultery with her in your heart. See, the mind and everything, I mean, that's... You know, whenever we stand before God on Judgment Day, we'll answer for everything from our every word, every thought, and every deed. I mean, so our thoughts count just as much as our actions that we do. And as far as lying goes, yes, that is one thing God definitely does not like. And, you know, the Bible says that the devil, that he is the father of liars. The devil, he's very clever. He knows how to deceive people. The Bible says, Jesus said in John chapter 10, 
that the thief comes but to rob, to kill, and to destroy. And Jesus said that he came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Mm -hmm. See, the devil, he's out to destroy every one of us, saved or not saved. Even after, you know, of course, as far as I know, most everyone in here, we've all come to the saving knowledge of Christ. But even after that, you have to be careful because Satan, he may not be able to get our souls, but he can definitely ruin our testimonies. Yes. Yeah. And he will do everything Amen. in his power to make your life miserable and full of grief. And so... We definitely have to keep our guard up. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 8, Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil is a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. You know, and Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 6 to put on the whole armor of God, everything from the helmet of salvation to the girdle of truth, the shoe shawl with the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness, and take up the sword which is the word, and we need that armor all the time Amen. because the devil, he's out there and his forces are, are organized. They are not dummies. It's just like, you know, we've been talking about World War II some this morning. Brother Jim telling us about his daddy and some of them who, were over, who fought the Nazis in World War II. The Nazis, they were organized and they knew what they were doing. Just like the devil. And, you know, and the devil, he worked through the Nazis and everything. Mm -hmm. All these evil people like ISIS and everything, they are under the control by Satan and his demons. Mm -hmm. And every problem in our world, I always tell people whenever there's a political discussion or anything, that all of our problems in this world boil down to one thing, and that's God and Satan fighting over the souls of mankind. Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes down to lying as well, you know, this week, you know, Hillary Clinton was supposed, you know, was given her testimony on the Benghazi deal. You know, yeah, she may have been able to get around the arm of justice here on this earth. A lot of these other politicians are probably able to, of course, with all the money and stuff they have to bribe people and everything. But one day, they'll have to answer to God for all, all of the things that they have done. Yeah. Just like we will. See, you may be able... To get around the arm of justice here, but God Almighty will get you. Amen. And so you better be sure that you get things settled with Him here while there's still time for you to get right with Him. Because once you draw that last breath, that's it for you. You're Amen. gone. And there's no going back after you pass away. You know, the Tenth Commandment, Thou shalt not covet. You know, honestly, we covet stuff every day, whether it be uh, these nice cars we see or, you know, nice houses or just other material things that people have. And even coveting goes to, you know, the Bible talks about not to covet a person's wife. You know, there's people that covet other people's spouses and everything. It's just amazing what coveting leads to. I mean, coveting will lead to people killing and stealing and all that kind of stuff to get the things that they want that they've been coveting and so that's why God made sure to put that on his Ten Commandments say the Ten Commandments all God's law they're not to make our lives miserable they're to keep us safe trying you know God's just looking out for our best interests and if we follow these Ten Commandments, God will definitely bless us in a mighty way. We've all messed up. We have all broken all of these commandments. Whether we want to admit it or not, we have broken all ten of them. And that's why Jesus Christ had to come and die on the cross for our sins. Because we can never be good enough for God. We can never be, you know good enough. The Bible says there's none good, none, there's none righteous, no, not one in Romans chapter 3. Then the Bible says in Isaiah the 64 that all of our righteousness are as filthy rags, all these good works and everything we think we're doing, it's so good. And in the eyes of the Lord, it's just a bunch of filthy rags. But we're supposed to work for the Lord 
after we get saved. See, a lot of people, there's people out there that are basing their salvation on good works and good deeds. Mm -hmm. It's not going to get them into heaven. Mm -hmm. The only way into heaven is through Jesus Christ. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. You can't get to heaven any other way but through Jesus. Going to mm -hmm. church won't save you. Reading the Bible won't save you. Baptism. Getting baptized won't save you. Taking communion won't save you. All these good things won't save you. Only the blood of Jesus Christ can save you. The blood Amen. that he shed on that old rugged cross over 2,000 years ago, that is what saves sinners like us. That's what saved me at the age of seven years old. And I'm very thankful for my salvation in Jesus Christ. Because without the Lord Jesus Christ, we cannot live. You know, we can't even take our next breath without his permission. We are blessed that we are still here. You know, we may never meet together like this ever again, this side of heaven. Mm -hmm. But the Lord, he wanted us to be here today. He has a purpose still for us to still mm -hmm. be here. He still has work for us to do with sharing his gospel with the lost and dying world. And we need to do as much as we can to lead as many people to the Lord while we're still here and take as many people to heaven with us. Because time is running out. The Lord's getting ready to come back. You know, we've been talking about how everything in the world's changing, everything going on in the Middle East. You know, the four blood moons, they just all occurred and everything. And since the last blood moon, Russia has been flexing its muscles over in the Middle East. And America is losing more of its superpower might. And everything's getting lined up for the end times, like I talked about the last time I was here. And so Jesus can come back any time. He could come back before we even leave this building today. We are just that close. Are you ready for whenever he calls you home? Whenever the trumpet sounds, will you be ready to go? Will you be ready to meet him face to face? This is your time now. The Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you're out here today and you're lost, the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. It's that simple like we've been talking about all morning. It's so simple a caveman can understand it. That's how mm -hmm. simple it is. So what is your choice? The choice is up to you. I've preached the message that the Lord wanted me to preach and presented the gospel to you. Now it's up to you to choose whether you'll follow Jesus or whether you'll follow the devil because you'll only serve one, one of them. You can't serve both. The Bible says, you know, Jesus said, no man can serve two masters you got to make your choice, and your choice will determine where you go when you die. You'll either go to heaven or to hell. And what determines that is if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And if you die without knowing Christ, you will spend eternity in hell. There's no way around it. There's no purgatory, no holding tank, either heaven or hell. It's that simple. And if you wind up in hell... <coughs> And you're out here listening to me today. You'll remember every word I said here. You'll remember all the times people gave you Bible tracts. You'll remember all the sermons you ever heard for all eternity while you were arriving in pain in the lake of fire. You'll remember it all. And I hope and pray you come to know Christ so you don't have to go through that because Jesus made it possible for you to avoid hell. God don't send no one to hell. People send themselves there because they reject Christ. So what will your choice be? Now, today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. Don't be like Felix and put it off and make it wind up in hell just like he did and the rich man did because they're still there today. Even though they've been dead for about a couple of thousand years or so, they are still in agonizing pain in the pits of hell today because they rejected the Son of God, Jesus Christ. So what will your choice be?
We're going to have a hymn of invitation. And at